So welcome to the next chapter. Uh, here you will see how I use color masks. Can you call it color masks? I don't know. Luminosity masks based on color channels. Because they also have like, like a really strong ability which helps you a lot in your post-processing. And that's what we will yeah take a look into now. So let's get started. Okay, so here you have an image from Northern no Norway. And it's one of my favorite ones I ever took because I like ice, I like water, I like mountains. So it has everything. Okay, so what we will do, you see the ice and the water in the foreground has a cool tint or let's say cool color tone. And at the same time, the mountain and the clouds have a reddish color tone. So we can use this to our advantage. Sometimes it's better to use color channels than the RGB channel, so the contrast, the luminosity channel. Because I will show you I will show you what I mean. When I click on this blue channel up there, you see white is selected, dark is not selected. It really nicely it nicely selects the foreground, but not the mountain too much, and not you know the dark tones here in the river. So we want to use that. So when I control click on it, I make a selection the same like I did with the RGB channel, just now based on the blue channel. So it mostly interacts with blue tones. Okay, so and when I further click on it, I mean control alt shift, I en enhance it. And when I save this, you see I have a really precise adjustment now based on the foreground. And when I control click this and use a levels layer, I can now work with the foreground by adding contrast. I really like that, as you see. And I don't want it in the sky, so I will group it, add a black mask, and now I will paint it only where I want it, without destroying my luminosity selection. It works really cool with ice and water, and, and like really blue skies and so on. If I don't want it everywhere, or let's say not too strong, then I can always, yeah, repaint. Perfect. Let's turn this on and off. Really cool. If I don't want it up here in the sky, I can repaint it there as well. And so on. And we call it contrast foreground and now we can do the same with other channels of course so we can now pick the red channel if you want <laughs> so let's go there and you see it selects also a bit of the foreground since there's some magenta-ish tone in there uh, but we want the sky so control click on it and save it and maybe we will um, shrink it down a bit more by control alt shift clicking save it again yeah we might might take this one so maybe now a curves adjustment and let's see what we can do can darken it a bit and add yeah contrast and maybe a bit more punch to the midtones that's like a really strong adjustment now, like input 25 in the darks is really dark already. And when you don't have a luminosity mask, you see what it does. But with the mask, totally different story. And I like how it adds punch to the sky, but without affecting it too much. And I actually like it in the whole image. Not too much in the foreground, but especially in the sky. So what I can do is I will add another group 
but now a gradient with like 55% opacity. That means I will remove it by 55% in the foreground. But the rest is nice. Okay, and we will call it contrast red tones. Something like that. Now we can delete those channels again since they are useless, since we changed the image and the channels don't change with it. Let's take a look at our channels again. The green tones, yeah. I think I want to use a opposite of the red tones. I'll show you what I mean. Let's control click on it and let's shrink it down a couple times by control alt shift clicking. Save it. And there you see it separates the sky and when I use my levels to further enhance it, it separates it even more. That's really cool. And now I will use this in two ways. First I will use it how it is and use a levels adjustment layer and we will add some contrast to our clouds, group it and yeah, paint it where we want it. Also this, this part here in the mountain, something like that, maybe not that strong. So now we can do that, go down with the opacity. And let's call it darken clouds. And now I want to use the opposite. So we will control click on it and then control shift I to invert. And now we have the sky mostly selected and the other side of the mountain. And let's control click on this and use a levels adjustment again. And now I can darken the sky. So we will group that and now we can paint it in those parts where we want it. And if it's too strong, I can always repaint with a lower op opacity to smooth it out. Pretty cool. Okay. And now one more thing. Let's call this darkened sky. Uh, let's check the color channels. I think blue is perfect. I want to brighten this part here. And you, now you see it's actually dark, so that means it's not selected, but I can always invert the selection. So I will do that. So control click on it, control shift I to invert, save it. And now you see we have a perfect selection and I make, can make this um, yeah even more precise by control alt shift clicking. And there we have it, perfect. Control click, go to levels. And now we can use the blend mode screen to brighten, as you can see. But when we want to maintain contrast, at least a little bit, we can further work with the levels and add a bit contrast back. Something like that. And now we will group that and we painted yeah again only where we want it and that's not everywhere and now it looks like oops what's that now it looks a bit too flat in my opinion so we can add back some punch by using the slider inside here so 
something like that. And yeah, we don't want it there. So we will paint black. All right. Perfect. Let's call this Brighton Mountain. And let's group everything and we will call it again adjustments. And let's see, maybe it's even a bit too dark here down in the bottom. So I will call I can also I can actually paint the adjustment in there as well if, if we want to. So it's a bit or I can copy the base layer and make the adjustment again. Now we will add a lot of highlights, group it, add a black mask, and we can paint in those highlights down here in the bottom. Something like that. Okay. Now you saw, yeah, really cool. Now you saw how you can use color channels to you make adjustments to your, yeah, not to the color, but to the contrast. And well, of course, when you add contrast, you're also affecting color. So you, as you see here, our image is more, con it's more colorful, of course. So that's like a nice side effect. But you see luminosity masks are really powerful in every way. And in the next chapter, I will show you another example how you can use color tones to create luminosity masks and work on a night image. So yeah, let's see you there.